Three months ago, I started a 3D printing business selling woodworking items on Etsy, and the truth is... This video is sponsored by PCBWay. At that point, I was really psyched to start a side hustle to try to earn some money from my 3D printers. And in this video, I will go through what I've learned during this period, what I like and don't like about it, what I could have done better, and how much I earned. But I will also tell you what I think are some of the common mistakes and if I think it's possible. Three months ago, I received this 3D printer from Bamboo Lab. Bamboo Lab. Bamboo Lab. I'm sorry, but apparently I cannot pronounce it. And I was thrilled to start my 3D printing business because I've been doing a lot of 3D printing through the years and also a lot of CAD modeling. So I thought I was perfectly equipped to draw up my own models and start selling them. It's been a little more than three months and I actually got rid of my two old printers because I couldn't stand them. I tried printing one item but it took so long that I got furious and I just gave both the old printers away. And since the Bamboo Lab, Bamboo, whatever, is limited to a build height of 256 millimeters, I got this which is another 3D printer on the market that can print really fast. It's from the company Effelsan and it's called V400. And that's because the speed is 400 millimeters a minute. And it can print a bit larger items up to 30 by 30 by 41 centimeters. And it also looks like something from the future. It also comes preloaded with Clipper, which is a printer software that can be used to print online. And that was another thing that I was getting all too attached to with the Bamboo Lab printer. Not having to deal with SD cards back and forth is a massive time saver. So here you can see the actual size of this thing. It's massive. And because of that, I sometimes actually bring it outside because I can't have it on a table in the room where I have my 3D printers. So I just keep it out here. It can affect the print quality some when it's windy, but it's good enough for some parts. And to power it, I'm actually using a battery from All Powers, the S700. And I also have it connected to solar, which means I can charge it at the same time when it's sunny at least. And the battery also comes with a couple of USB and a USB-C port, so you can also charge your phone and stuff like that. It's great to have around. And yeah, if you want to do huge 3D prints, Check out the V400 from FL Sun. it's huge. So I'm currently printing on three printers at the moment and I'm not printing constantly because I'm actually moving really soon. So I've actually paused my Etsy store for the moment. A lot of people have asked me about what happened and I wanted to let you know what I think are some common mistakes when doing this. I'm no expert and I'm certainly not successful, but I have been selling without a lot of effort. And usually when you start a business to sell stuff, you do some kind of market research to see if this is something people are interested in. I don't think you have to do that with this, but you might want to consider Etsy like the market research. Because if no one wants to buy what you made, then it probably won't sell all that much. So I uploaded these for instance. This is a simple cover for a Rode wireless mic. It kind of snaps onto the microphone and instead of seeing the Rode logo, you just see this black square. I know it's an incredibly small market for these, but I thought maybe someone wants them, but no one did. Or actually I had one order and they apparently loved them. But Etsy is kind of good because it will tell you if people are saving your item and you get a notification every time someone does. And as of yet, no one did that to these. And that kind of gives me that this isn't going to sell like crazy. Like market research through trying, basically. One issue I think a lot of people are suffering from are poor images. And any camera will do. Don't think it's about the camera. Make sure to play around with it. If you have the possibility to shoot in RAW with your phone, do that and have the extra leeway to do some post editing in Lightroom or a similar app. But also try to figure out how to light your product. I have a really cheap photo box that I got from Amazon. I'll, I'll link something similar down below. It came with lights and I think it was around 30 bucks. But if you don't have that yet, try using natural light. Take the photos near a window or where you can have natural light. When you have photos that are good and you have a product that people like, you will eventually sell. Another thing people have asked about is shipping. Well, that's a bit of a bummer to be honest. 
I tend to pay somewhere in between $5 to $10 for each package in shipping internationally. For most of my items I have it set to $5 for shipping worldwide. That means I'm losing some on each product in shipping but I consider it baked into the product price. I'd rather have the price of shipping fixed like that and account for some of the shipping into the product. But I'm not sure what's the best approach, I have no idea. So one of the things that I realized quite soon is that it's quite time consuming to ship items. Because it usually happens that I wake up before I go to work, I go downstairs to pack the orders and start new prints. But then packing an order takes a lot of time and also doing the shipping labels is a bit of a hassle. So what I started doing instead is that I packed the orders in advance. I pre-packed a bunch of orders, stored them on shelves where I marked out what it was on the shelf. I printed small colored dots that I can use to mark the boxes with the color of the item. In the box I simply placed the item, some wrapping, paper around it, a note from me saying thanks for ordering. I don't seal the boxes in case someone orders multiple items. In that case I need to repack it. This was also a great way of keeping track of how much inventory I had of everything. I also made some changes to my shipping setup to further reduce the time spent sending out orders. To start with, I cleaned up my work area. Having a clean work surface makes it a lot easier working. I ordered a shipping label printer from Amazon. It was cheap and the quality isn't the best, but it works. It prints really quick and I can just rip the label from the printer and stick it to the box. I'm also using some other stickers for my boxes. I put one sticker on top of the box with my logo and a short thank you. And I print all these stickers on sticker paper and cut them out using a Silhouette Cameo vinyl cutter. I got this one for my wife as a Christmas gift, but now it's me using it. To be honest, she never really used it once. <laughs> now. Shipping is a hassle in itself, especially when shipping abroad, because it's expensive and if I were to compete with the international market, I had to compete with the shipping prices. So the cheapest option for me is sending the package as a letter and that means for some reason I have to leave the package at a local post office in the center of the nearest city. And that's like a 30 minute drive for me and I can't go back and forth there every day. So far I've managed to send in bulk and go after work because it's close to work but it isn't really a long term solution. So if you have any suggestions on shipping let me know. When I get an order I tend to start a print for the same item. That means I can keep a constant stock of everything. And in between I try to print what I can. So one thing I learned quickly is that I need to expand my product range. But I haven't had much time lately to do more products. But if you're in the same position as me, I think it's wise to just keep expanding. The more items you have though, it requires more space and logistics. But when you realize something isn't selling, you can get rid of that, focus on the things that actually sell. Another thing I learned during this time is that a cost that I wasn't calculating for was the cost for 3D printer repairs. I guess it isn't that much over time, but I had to replace an extruder on one of the printers and also a part for the AMS unit that broke because of a wrongly wrapped spool. And all those costs should be added to the business expenses of course, but it is hard calculating for this before you start. You won't know what's going to break. So with the new FL Sun printer and my two Bamboo Lab printers, I now have three really fast printers. One of the Bamboo Lab printers might look a bit weird and that's because I encased it with a project called Arc that I found on printables. This is an enclosure for the P1P that can be printed to be able to print filaments that are a bit stronger. The V400 from Ethelsun is mainly used to print bigger items at the moment, but it also handles PETG really well, so whenever I print that, I can use that printer. So for expansion, I am thinking of adding another AMS unit to my already existing P1P, but most of all, I want to add more products to my line. Because I get sales every now and then, and for me as an introvert, this is a really nice side hustle. I can manage all things around the business during the morning 
and then I'm free the rest of the day with the occasional restart of the printers. Actually, right now I'm moving, so I don't have any printers at all because they're all packed down. So if you're in the same position or if you don't have a 3D printer, you can use a service like the sponsor from today's video, PCBWay. Simply upload your 3D printed files to their website, choose what type of filament and color you want, and they will quote you instantly. And you can have 3D printed parts sent to you. They also offer CNC milling and of course PCB assembly, so check out their website at PCBWay.com. And thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Oh, I failed to mention the stress in it, uh, so here we go. Uh, it can be a bit stressful uh, if you have a lot of other obligations, to be honest. I probably should have waited to start until I was fully ready. So be prepared to do the extra work. I kind of saw it as extra labor some of the times and I didn't really want to do it, but I did because I really wanted to try this thing out. And another thing that can be stressful is if people don't get their packages and you have to repost it. And there is also the reviews. I mean, if you get bad reviews, it kind of sucks. They have this thing on Etsy called Star Seller. You might have seen it. And to become that, you need to reach a couple of criteria. One of them being the reviews, and they need to be really good. Anyway, I still think it's a nice side hustle for me, and might be for you as well. Uh, but I thought I should tell you that it's not all strawberries and summer fields. All right. Now, this doesn't need to be a full-time job. It can just be a side hustle that earns you a bit more money. For me, so far, I've had 49 sales through Etsy, but I also listed my items on my website, and on there I've had about 20 sales mostly through connecting it to my YouTube channel, which you can do by setting up a website with Shopify. I'm not sponsored by them, but they currently work together with YouTube. So since I started, I've made 16,300 Swedish crowns on Etsy, which is about $1,600. It's been a couple of orders every week, and that has been perfectly fine for what I can manage right now with a full-time job, a YouTube channel that I maintain daily, and a family with three kids. I can't handle anymore at the moment, but I would like to in the future. Once I've moved and uh, I've now quit my day job, I'll have more time to further expand this side of my business and do even more products. And this is something I will definitely pursue. So three months ago, I started a 3D printing business selling woodworking items on Etsy. And the truth is, I really love it. It's perfect for me. My Etsy store is currently on pause and it's been so for a couple of weeks because I need to move. So for the past one and a half months, I haven't sold anything. But when I'm fully moved and all set up, I will continue this business venture. And who knows, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them in another video. I, I suppose that's it. See ya.